an approach alternative to dividend discount model for valuing a firm's stock price is to use the firm's free cash flows instead these are the cash flows that are available to the company itself and its equity holders the usage of free cash flows in stock valuation is also useful in a case where a company does not pay any dividend because for such company the application of dividend discount model is difficult to use also the usage of free cash flows in stock valuation gives more better insights about the firm than the dividend discount model the first approach in free cash flow usage is the free cash flow for the firm or f c f f these are the after tax cash flows raised by a firm's operations net of the capital investments and the networking capital these cash flows are available to the firm and its equity holder and its debt holders now using the constant growth dividend discount model the fcff and the terminal value of the firm can be discounted in order to determine the firm value and their discounting can be at the company's weg or the weighted average cost of capital so to determine the value of the firm using the free cash flows to the firm we have two variables the first is the yearly free cash flows to the firm and the second variable is the uh, firm's terminal years free cash flows of the firm and both we are uh, required to discount at the firm's weg so the resulting value is the firm's fair market value and if we divide this value by the number of shares then it will give us the free cash flow of the firm per share the second approach in this regard is to use free cash flow to the equity instead to the firm these free cash flows to the equity are adjusted by after tax interest expense cash flows on the issuance and repayment of the debt now to determine the value of equity we can deduct the value of debt from the uh, present value of the free cash flow of the firm that we have determined in our earlier example this means that when we have determined free cash flow of the firm and we uh, we, we we discount it at the discount uh, firms vac it gives us the value of the firm and if from this value of the firm we deduct we deduct the value of the debt it gives us the uh, free cash a uh, value of the equity holders or the fair value of the fair market value of the equity holders now this value of the equity can also be determined alternatively using the firms free cash flows to the equity and the firm's cost of equity so for that purpose we need to have two types of cash flows number first is the free cash flow to the equity holders and the free cash flow to the equity holders at the terminal year of the company so we need to divide the yearly free cash flows to the equity holders and the firm's terminal years free cash flow to the equity holders over the firm's cost of capital and the resulting value is the fair value of the equity now how free cash flow valuation model works for that purpose we have an example here we see that in uh, panel a we have input data that is related to price earning capital spendings long term debt number of shares earning per share and working capital and then in panel b we have cash flow calculations using profit interest rate change in working capital depreciation and capital spendings the resulting 
figure is the free cash flow of the firm and free cash flow of equity and these are the two cash flows that we need for our example in panel c now we need to determine our discount rate which is the company's vac for determining discount rate we use the kappa model and for that kappa model we have company's current beta its unlevered beta its terminal growth rate tax rate and rate of debt which is interest rate risk free rate market risk premium market value of equity debt value levered beta and the resulting value is the vac for using that vac uh, we have present value factor each for fcff and fcfe and finally we have the present values for the firm's free cash flow for the firm and free cash flow for the equity now these are the variables that we are using our computation now we have the data from 2016 and 17 and data for 2020 these are highlighted in gray color for 2018 and 19 the data we have gathered through the interpolation from beginning and final values so these are the interpolated values now see an important thing that uh, we have negative free cash flow to the equity holder in earlier years and in the final year it is a uh, positive the negative cash flows are due to the debt repayments now come to our intrinsic values of the firm and intrinsic value of the equity and here is the intrinsic values of the firm and for the equity holders by dividing these values over the company's number of shares we have the internal values intrinsic values per share so how these valuation models can be compared we see that in principle the free cash flow approach is fully consistent with the dividend discount model because both of the models use k and g as the discounting factors but in practical the values from these cash flow models uh, may differ substantially because the financial analysts are always forced to make certain simple assumptions this means that finding bargains under these valuation models is not easy but the free cash flow approach is a straight forward model application then finding a, a proper inputs for other models the conclusion here is that it is extremely useful model being a free cash flow model for the financial analyst because they provide ball park estimates of the intrinsic value of the company's stock there are certain problems with the discounted cash flow models like discounted cash flow valuation estimation may uh, always going to be some imprecise because estimation of the yearly cash flows and the terminal value can be highly sensitive to small changes in some input values for example there is there is a chance that a less reliable component of value is the economic profit on the assets already in place by the firm also there is a least reliable component of value of growth opportunities computed for the particular firm